Welcome to the Dr. Ashley Show. I'm Dr. Ashley, and today we are going to dive in to a topic that I wish everyone understood, especially for those who are just struggling with their weight, struggling with a metabolism that seems to be broken. I mean, if this is you, if you've ever thought to yourself, oh my gosh, I'm eating clean, I'm working out, but I'm still gaining weight, or maybe you said to yourself, nothing seems to work anymore. I want you to know that you are not crazy. It's not your fault. See, the truth around weight gain is that it really has nothing to do with willpower. It's not a flaw in personality. It's not a lack of discipline. And I want to share with you today eight deeply rooted biological mechanisms. It's called the ominous octet that are actually working against you. And these Mechanisms are based on biochemistry, based on science, and explain why so many people get stuck in this fat storage mode, especially when they feel like they're doing everything right. So today I want to walk through each one and explain how they get disrupted, and most importantly, how you can start fixing them. Now, if you've never seen one of my videos or listened to one of my episodes, I'm Dr. Ashley. I am the owner and founder of PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition, where to date, we've just updated our numbers. We have served over 11,600 people, dropping nearly 500,000 pounds of fat weight nationwide, which I think is unbelievable. And my goal here with this channel is to give you the information you need to be able to create positive change in your own life. So let's dive in with number one which is a muscle problem, number one of the ominous octet. So we're going to start with your muscles because this is where a lot of weight loss stalls. Now, muscle is supposed to pick up glucose after a meal and use it for energy. You take in the food, your muscles take up the glucose, and then you have energy to perform your daily living, whatever you love to do. But if you have insulin resistance, and insulin resistance is where your cells no longer respond to insulin like they used to. They're no longer insulin sensitive. I want you to think that your muscle cells, for example, when you're insulin resistant, have a callus around them and they can't listen to or hear the signals that they're being given. So your muscles, I want you to think in very simple terms, they just stop listening. I want you to imagine that your muscle cells are like locked doors and insulin is the key. In a healthy body, that key opens the door and lets the glucose in, and then you have the energy to use it. But when you are insulin resistant, the door remains locked. It's like a jammed door, and insulin comes around this little key, and it just can't open the door anymore. So this glucose stays in your bloodstream. And the body can only tolerate one to two teaspoons of sugar in the blood at any given time before it becomes toxic. And it wants to get it out of the bloodstream. When you can't get the sugar out of the bloodstream, you become pre-diabetic and then type 2 diabetic. The body does not want that to happen. And so what it does as a protective mechanism against diabetes is it turns that excess glucose in the bloodstream into fat, specifically in the liver. So the fix here around the muscle problem is to maintain healthy muscle as much as you can, to build muscle. Do resistance training. Doesn't mean that you have to lift heavy weights, but something that's going to overload the muscles. And then you want to lower your fasting insulin levels, and you do this through your diet. You do it through specific lifestyle mechanisms so that your cells can actually start to respond again. Now, if you feel like you're doing everything right and you just can't figure out what's happening in your body, why is your body not listening to you? It could be just the smallest tweak you need to make to start seeing results. If you think that this is the case for you and you feel like a customized meal plan and one-on-one guidance would be supportive and helpful in your weight loss journey, then you should check out PhD Weight Loss. If you are watching this video on YouTube, just check out the link in the description. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, just go to My PhD Weight Loss to learn more. Now, the next component of the ominous octet is the liver. And we talked about it just briefly when I was talking about muscles. 
Now, your liver is a huge player in fat loss. It's where fat burn happens. It plays a central role in your metabolism overall. And when it's not working right, then fat loss becomes almost impossible. So here's what should happen. When you eat, insulin tells your liver to stop making sugar because your body just got fuel, right? It doesn't need any more right now. But when you're insulin resistant, your liver stops listening to insulin. Just like your muscles remain jammed, this door is jammed and locked and can't open, a similar situation happens with your liver. It's not listening. So it keeps pumping out glucose. It keeps pumping out sugar into your blood even when you don't need it. The signals are off. This keeps your blood sugar high, it keeps insulin high, it turns off fat burning, it keeps inflammation elevated, and I've talked a lot about inflammation. If you want to learn more about inflammation, what it is, how it impacts the body, definitely check out this video. I'll have it linked in the description here on YouTube. But, you know, that's not it. When your diet is high in sugar, when it's high in refined carbs, when it's high in alcohol, and You might be listening to this and say, gosh, it's not high in these items. I don't eat much of these items. It doesn't have to be high compared to your neighbor or your spouse or your partner or your kid, but it's high on your unique tolerance level. If you are eating above your tolerance level of these items, then the liver will start turning this excess fuel into fat and it stores this fat inside of itself. So I want you to think, and I've talked about this on my previous videos, you consume these foods that are above your tolerance level. At that point, your liver is at full capacity with sugar, can't store any more. So it's gonna take that sugar and it's gonna turn it into fat in the liver and you develop fatty liver. If you have fatty liver, this is what's happening. And then the liver has to get the fat out because it starts to overflow with the fat. And now you go to the doctor and you see a lipid profile that is not conducive to good health, right? High triglyceride levels, high LDL, high VLDL. It's because your liver is fatty and it's pushing that fat out into the bloodstream. And a fatty liver is a liver that is not working appropriately. I don't want to say it's broken. You can heal it, but it's not going to be effective or conducive to efficient weight loss. It fuels inflammation, it blocks fat burning, and it worsens insulin resistance even more. So instead of being this fat burning machine, which you want to be, your liver becomes a fat storage machine. Okay, so number three in this ominous octet is the pancreas. Your pancreas is the organ that produces insulin. And it produces insulin in response to a meal. So you eat a meal, your body's going to produce insulin, which is normal and healthy. And you're going to have fluctuations of higher insulin and lower insulin levels. The issue is when you have chronically high fasting insulin levels. When your body constantly needs more insulin because your cells aren't listening, they're numb, they can't hear, then your pancreas gets exhausted. It gets, it experiences burnout. It can't keep up. And this is when your blood sugar rises, you start developing type 2 diabetes, pre-diabetes, heart disease, all of these inflammatory chronic conditions. You also have hormones. You've probably heard of this hormone, GLP-1. There are drugs out there that mimic it. And GIP, that signal insulin release. They tell the pancreas to release insulin. But those also shut down when you're insulin resistant or when you're eating too often. If you graze throughout the day, if you're eating every uh, you know, two to three hours, then your body's not going to work as efficiently as it could. The system ultimately breaks down on two levels. Insulin doesn't work, and now you stop making enough of it. All right, the fourth component of this ominous octet is you start to develop these fat cells that fight back. We often think that fat is just extra storage. It's just hanging around. We don't necessarily like the look of it. It's annoying, but it's not inert. It's not doing nothing. It's actually very, very active. I want you to think of fat like an active organ. I talk a lot about visceral fat, the belly fat. This deep visceral fat is inflamed and it fights back. It has a mind of its own. All it wants to do is grow and get fatter and fatter as fast as possible. I want you to think of the belly fat specifically. That fat that's in and around the abdominal area, in and around your organs, is like a tumor. 
So early on, your fat cells expand safely and they store this excess energy. If you think about it from our ancestral days, we wanted to have a little bit of fat because we could use that during famine when we didn't have availability to food. But eventually, at some point, they get full. And we see them nowadays when food is always available, it's hyper palatable, it's highly addictive, it promotes fat storage so rapidly. We see these fat cells get overly full. They become insulin resistant themselves and they start leaking free fatty acids into the bloodstream. And this is when you will see elevated triglycerides and elevated LDL. They start leaking inflammatory cytokines. And these are, I want you to think, kind of um, in inflammatory hormones or compounds that mess with your metabolism. And they also start to leak signals that block muscle growth and insulin signaling. So now you've got this issue with a poor lipid profile, inflammation coursing throughout the body, and then this metabolism that starts to become pretty darn inefficient. And this is when you start storing fat in really dangerous places, in your liver, in your heart, in your pancreas. This is that deep visceral belly fat. All right, number five of the ominous octet is your brain. Your brain plays a big part in fat loss and a healthy metabolism, right? If you think about it, your brain is supposed to regulate hunger and energy and these signals of fullness. In a healthy body, the brain listens to hormones like leptin, which is your I'm full hormone. It listens to insulin, which is a hormone that tells your body that you just received fuel and you should stop eating. And it also listens to the hunger hormone ghrelin, which tells your body that you're hungry and you need to eat food. But when your brain becomes resistant to these signals, guess what happens? You keep eating. You're starving. Even though your body has plenty of stored energy, everything is off and everything has gone haywire. And your brain keeps thinking that you're starving and it lowers your metabolism to save the fuel instead of burn the fuel. So what's happening is these signals are just getting disconnected, right? So it's this perfect storm now where you have low energy, you've got more hunger, and you have a, a slowed fat burning potential. Number six are your kidneys, and your kidneys actually play a big part in this uh, fat loss healthy metabolism puzzle. When you're insulin resistant, your kidneys actually start to reabsorb too much glucose instead of flushing it out, right? Your body should flush some of that out, and instead in this uh, situation, your body's going to hold on and your kidneys help to hold on to that glucose. So this helps to keep your blood sugar elevated even if your diet is decent, some diabetes actually block this mechanism. They're called SLGT2 inhibitors, and they help you urinate out the sugar. Uh, but you actually can support this naturally through how you eat and how you move your body throughout the day. Number seven of the ominous octet is your gut. Your gut bacteria plays a massive role in weight regulation. When your gut microbiome is imbalanced, and I've talked about this a lot, it suppresses GLP-1, which is that fullness hormone. It increases inflammation, it triggers cravings, and it weakens your metabolism. Now, you know ultra-processed food, sugar, alcohol, um, not eating a, a protein-forward diet can damage the microbiome. And when you can fix this, it's really powerful, and a lot of us aren't aware how much the gut plays a part. At PhD Weight Loss, we're actually conducting a study looking at the gut. And the great news is, is you can make huge improvements so quickly. We see people come into PhD with a gut microbiome that represents obesity and weight gain. And within two to four weeks, we can see a huge shift in the gut microbiome to one that represents uh, a healthy metabolism and a healthy body weight. And number eight, last but not least, is uh, storing fat in the wrong places. So not all fat is equal, and, and I've talked about this quite a bit too. You know, subcutaneous fat, the fat that lies right under the skin, really isn't a, a big problem. It is that deep visceral belly fat, that fat around the organs that is very toxic to the body because it secretes inflammatory chemicals, it hijacks your metabolism. I want you to think that the belly fat is really hungry fat. The ultimate goal is to reduce that belly fat and fully collapse that fat mass. You can do this effectively through how you're eating and your lifestyle. 
If you feel that supplementation is a helpful tool to you in your journey to support your metabolism, then you should check out GlucoCut Plus. I created this capsule product that has high quality, high absorptive forms of berberine, um, of chromium picolinate, of zinc to help support the body, the adrenals, the thyroid, better blood sugar control as you're going through the process of fat loss. And I have heard from many customers that it has helped support a reduction in cravings and has helped to support their metabolism in general in their weight loss journey. So if you are listening to this on a podcast platform, just check out drashleywellness.com if you're interested to learn more. And if you are watching this on YouTube, just check out the link in the description and we'll provide you guys with a special discount. Now, if you are gaining weight or if you are struggling to drop it and nothing makes sense, I want you to remember that it's not just about calories. I'm not saying we defy the law of thermodynamics, but the source of our calories and how our calories impact our hormones, as we talked about today, impact this ominous octet. It's not about willpower. It's not about discipline. It's about what's happening in your body. It's about biology. And the good news is every single one of these systems can be improved, can be fully healed when you take the right steps. You can reverse insulin resistance. You can restore your hormone sensitivity and you can flip your fat burning switch on. Now, I hope that this was helpful to you. If you are watching this on YouTube, drop your thoughts your feedback, any questions that you might have on this ominous octet below, and I will read them and uh, reply. If you're listening to this on a podcast platform, please leave a review, leave your feedback. I'd love to read it and it really makes a difference. So thanks you guys so much for tuning in. And remember, you got to step up to make the change. Lead with your heart, train your mind, and do not negotiate with your body. I'll see you next time.